I've had mixed experiences, but the vast majority of universities that I've dealt with making Freedom of Information Act requests have been ridiculously uh, obstructive. Mm -hmm. And they've done it in a variety of ways. The most notable and most just absurd example, I don't have to argue the point once I share with you guys what happened. When I was trying to get phone records out of Old Miss, believe it or not, they took the position that I'd have to pay the cost of having their lawyers review all those phone records and the, and the bill, or maybe I should say the ransom, for the right to look at the phone records was $25,100. And they actually put that in writing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, cautionary tale here for universities, big mistake. Why? Because I took that letter and I went straight to Dan Wilkin at USA Today, to Pat Forday, who was mm -hmm. in Yahoo, and, and uh, other sports writers who I'd gotten to know. And of course, they expressed their opinion in columns and I jumped on Old Miss with both feet and within a matter of days, they did a complete U-turn <clears throat> and gave me all the phone records. You know, you know how much they charged me? Zero. They just wanted out of that trap. And that's an extreme example, but what I'm seeing across the board in the Big Ten, and, and I just said so, in a, a letter that I wrote to Purdue and delivered within the last hour. I, I wrote back to a lawyer who had responded with the latest uh, variation of a dozen reasons why I couldn't have these records. And, uh, <clears throat> and I said that I know that your response, Purdue's response, is not unlike the responses of other Big Ten universities, all of which. Some of them that you posted on Twitter too, that I that we had great amusement in watching. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I, I should start putting these up because uh, I mean, I don't want to embarrass people, but you know, I, I'm not gonna say which <laughs> university it is, but I, what bothers me about this more than anything is that most of the people that I'm dealing with in, in these universities are lawyers. They're not experienced lawyers, but they're, mainly young lawyers, <clears throat> and I know they have a client and they have to accommodate what their client's desires are, but they push things to a limit that is disturbing because they're not just lawyers, they're public servants too. The public owns these documents. Mm. And I, I received an email, I'm not gonna say which university it is, but mm. yesterday, and, and it was one of those moments in the law practice where you, you uh, rely on your seasoned judgment and you take that email and you set it aside instead of responding to it. Because if you're going to respond to it right then, you're probably going to say something that you, that you might wish you hadn't said later. So I didn't respond to it. But this lawyer sends me an email and cites two cases and asserts that these two cases stand for the proposition that the way my request is worded, it's, it's, uh, they're not required to answer. Well, I guess he didn't think I was going to go read those two cases. They're not from Arkansas or Georgia, but you know, I can, you know, they, they, the cases read the same, whether they're, you know, in Georgia, Arkansas, or, or Montana. It's a big assumption that you're not going to read the cases he's citing that, that you're not going to get these documents. That's well, a, it's a pretty big leap. Here's, here's what disturbs me. And this is a, this is a lesson for all the young lawyers, law students out there. <clears throat> It's okay to be an advocate for your client, but, but don't do things like cite two cases. One of these cases is a prisoner petition that has nothing to do at all with the proposition that he asserted in his email. It, it, it didn't have anything to do with it. The second yeah, case isn't any more on point and it just really irks me. You know, play, you want to play games? Fine, but you got to play by the rules. You can push. So you can push the boundaries, but don't walk over the line. And that, that, that disturbs me. But to answer your question about, well, how do you deal with that? I think that's where, you know, I mentioned I've had these different roles as a lawyer. And I think that's what's made me more effective at this point in my career than I ever was before. I've, 
I've been an executive vice president of the world's largest company. I've managed the legal department of the world's largest company. I, before I got that job, I sued the world's largest company and they wrote a check for, I think it was 22 and a half million. And so I've been a plaintiff's class action lawyer. I've been the director of a state agency where I had to, you know, the buck stopped with me when I was state police director about responding to FOIA requests. I've represented public officials. I've represented coaches. I've represented players and I've, I've done a stint I uh, did a stint for a year with the NCAA and on standby with NCAA enforcement. So I've got a really good 360 view of the world. And, uh, and I think that just gives me some insights into how to deal with these situations and, and you know, good lesson for the young lawyers out there. It's a real simple one. Uh, People don't get to be successful in this business unless they work really hard and uh, and don't quit. And I'm always reminded of that uh, one of my favorite movie scenes where uh, Tom Cruise is cross-examining Jack Nicholson. Everybody remembers this movie buff, Colonel Jesse. I know it. I know what you're going to say because you just used the GIF on me. Yeah, but I love that. I love that. <laughs> but you know what? I, I mean, I love that scene because it's wait, so you got to you got to say the line, Tom. I don't. I want to take your steam. Yeah, you, you like can't you handle the truth. truth. That's the line. <laughs> Tom Cruise saying, "We don't want answers. We want the truth." But right. if you dissect that courtroom movie scene, there's a lot of great lessons in there. Most important ones, you, you might be able to tell. I used to teach as an adjunct member of the law school faculty, so I've had that experience and you know being able to share real life experiences with law students is great but uh, I, I always like to use that courtroom scene because it, it really illustrates the point you know Tom Cruise didn't make Colonel Jessup admit that he ordered the code red without two things working really hard and being committed to not quit and uh, you know that's <laughs> There's no shortcuts in this business. You, you're not going to be successful by being lazy. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've always taken pride in being able to, you know, I may not be as uh, smart as some other lawyers, but I can't work them. <laughs> um. <laughs>